Praise the Lord. We want to consider something very important from the Word of God. But before we look into it, can we just have a brief moment of prayer? Our Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We worship you for this day you have made, and we should rejoice and be glad. We thank you for bringing us to this day once again. I pray, O Lord, even as we look into your word, we pray you will open our eyes of understanding to your word, and you will teach us your word. You will give us the understanding of your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This day we'll be looking at the topic, the move of love. The move of love. Our text will be taken from John chapter 3, in verse 16. John chapter 3, in verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, talking about the degree of his love there, he so loved the world, the degree of his love is measureless, is immeasurable. The, the amount of his love is, is so great and so grand, in so much that his love, he loved the world even before man fell. And so that love was manifested to remove us from our sins and from our transgressions because the fall of man did not take God on our ways. The fall of man did not take God on our ways. God had already planned ahead. He had already prepared a means, a way by which man would be saved per adventure man fell into sin. And man actually fell into sin. And so the grand plan of God took effect. We'll be looking at three points as we consider this message. The first point we'll be looking at is God's in, ineffable love described. In John chapter 3 verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the gospel there. That's the move of God's love. The move of divine love. He so loved the world that he gave. Now, this love of God is indescribable. Is indescribable, but with man's limitation, man was able to describe, you know, based on what he knows, and based on his knowledge, and based on his experience, and based on his under uh, his own understanding, he was able to, you know, humanly describe. Humanly, he was able to describe it. But you see, the love of God is indescribable. The love of God is indescribable. That's why John said, Behold, what manner of love the Father of the, the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And John again is saying, For God so loved, so loved, talking about the degree of his love, he so loved the world. And as a result of the love he had for the world, it was set in motion. God is love. God himself is love. And so he showed his love unto the world. He set his love in motion in order to rescue mankind from sin in order to rescue mankind from degradation so that man will not you know move on the coast of destruction in jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 his love is indescribable jeremiah chapter 31 in verse 3, it says, The Lord that appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. You can see that. It's an everlasting love. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, that means if you believe in him, if you confess him, you will be saved. And that love that God had for us before the foundation of the world, he still has that same love for us now. Because his love is still in effect now, his love is still, in, uh, you know, in his love is still working now. That is, anyone who calls upon him, as many as will come unto him, he will in no wise cast out. So his love is still in effect today. Because if his love is not in effect, that means the door of mercy will be closed. But his love is still in effect. That's why, as many as will call on unto on, on him, he will in no wise cast out. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Even now. Whosoever shall call the name of the Lord in any sphere, 
in any sphere of influence, in any part of the world, whether in the you know Arctic or in the Antarctic, wherever you are, anyone whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That God's in a favor love shown unto everyone is given unto everyone is described and you know it is delivered unto us so that we can have his salvation he said the lord had appeared of old unto me saying yeah i have loved thee with an everlasting love with an everlasting love before the foundation of the world god loved us and now he's still loving us he's still loving us anyone who comes to him he will save he will he will rescue it will, you know, deliver. It will save that one. His love is an everlasting love. His love endures, endures forever. His love endures forever. And God is not going to change the degree of his love. It's with that same degree, that same standard that which he has given unto us, that is what will remain. He's not going to uh, add to it or subtract from it. No, his word of God is clear and plain. It will not, nothing will be added to it, nothing will be subtracted from it. It's not going to be modified, it's not going to be toyed with, it's not going to be mangled, it, 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 it's not going to be modified, it's not going to be changed. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is set in heaven. His word is his love. His word is his love. The love of God is his word. The love of God is God's you know, way of liberating mankind from sin. The love of God is God's way of, you know, bringing mankind back to himself so that man will not go into destruction forever. He said, therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. In Psalm 57, in verse 10 and 11. Psalm 57. Verse 10 and 11. It says... For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, let thy glory be above the earth. In sec the second point we are looking at is God's only begotten given, God's only begotten Son given. In John chapter 3, in verse 16. John chapter 3. In verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. The proof of God's love is that he gave. That is the proof of God's love. The evidence of God's love. God was not just saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, and he did not give us anything. No. He gave us something. And he's not just giving us any kind of thing. He gave us something precious to him. His only begotten Son. That is sacrifice. That is, that is God's love there in John 3, 16. God's love shown unto us there is perceived by caring. That is, God cared for us. God cared. He cared. That was why He showed us love. He did not want us to perish, but to have everlasting life. He cared. So we perceive that, hmm. God actually cared for us, for him to show us his love. He actually cared for us. The greatest love story ever told, the greatest love story is encapsulated in this verse of the scripture, John 3.16. And this John 3.16 is a widely uh, you know, famous verse of the scripture because it is read by almost everyone. It is the greatest love story ever told unto mankind. And it you know, shows clearly the definition of the gospel. It defines and spells out the letters of the gospel clearly. That is the letter G stands for God. O stands for only. S stands for Son. P is that we should not perish. E but have everlasting than the L life. That spells out John 3:16, you know, clearly, succinctly spells out this gospel. And so we know that we, we perceive God's care. We know that God is actually caring. When we look at it in John 3:16, and we see the verse, we ponder on the verse, we meditate on the verse, 
and we begin to you know get insights and clear insights and divine revelation of God's mind and we begin to see what God actually had in mind that he actually cared for us to show us his love he did not want us to perish but have everlasting life he did not want us to perish but have eternal life he actually cared for us and that made him to give the proof of God's love is that he gave, he gave, he gave his only begotten son. He gave someone who was most precious to him. That is, his love was strengthened by sacrifice. The perception of his love was caring. The proof of his love was giving. And the sacrifice of his love the, the, the strength of his love was sacrifice. The strength of his love was sacrifice. He gave someone most precious to him. In the book of John 3, 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why did he do so? He did it so that we will not perish, but have everlasting life. He did it so that we will not avoid iniquity anymore. So that sin will no longer reign in our other bodies. We will be, you know, turned from sin unto the liberating truths. We will turn from sin unto righteousness because we are no longer under the law, but under grace. The grace of God that brings salvation it has appeared unto us, appeared unto all men. And that grace is teaching us something, teaching us that denying ungodliness and holy loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We are to live righteously and godly. In Acts 3, 26, unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Unto you first, that is unto the children of Israel, God, having raised up his son. That word raised up his son there means two things. It means that God actually you know, loaded his son. God actually sophisticated his son, equipped his son with the gift of salvation, and released him into the earth, into the world, into the sphere of, you know, of influence, to influence the world with his salvation, to influence the world with his gift of salvation. That's to, that is to reconcile all men back to God, so that all men through him might be saved. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The gift of God that has brought salvation, the gift of salvation, the gift of God has come unto the world now through His Son. His Son came for that mission. That was His mission. That was His job description. And she shall bring forth His Son, and thou shalt call His name Jesus, for He shall save His people from their sin. That was His mission on earth to save His people from their sin, to save the people of God. He came unto his own, his own did not receive him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But as many that received him, his own did not receive him, his own did not recognize him, his own did not perceive him, but as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. And the second thing about this race of a son is the first means that he, the, he was loaded, he was sophisticated, he was equipped, fortified with the gift of salvation to bring to the earth. And then the second is that he actually rose from the dead. If Jesus Christ was not risen from the dead because he, he, he died, he was crucified, he died, he was buried, and he resurrected the third day. And at his resurrection, salvation was you know, offered unto the world. If Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead the third day, salvation will not be offered. So unto you first is confirmed. It's confirmed. That verse of the scripture is confirmed because... Jesus Christ actually was risen from the dead. It is confirmed by his resurrection from the dead. It was he, God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, sent him to bless everyone, as many as will come, whether Jew or Greek, as many as will come unto him, as many as will believe on him, will in no why he will in no wise cast out. In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. In John 3, 17 and 18. John 3, 17 and 18. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3, 17 and 18. 
It says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world through him, the world through Jesus Christ, might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You have not believed in the advocate. You have not believed in the mediator, the one who is bridging the gap between us and God. The one standing as an intercessor, telling the Father to forgive them, that they don't know what they are doing. If you do not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God, if you do not believe, then you are condemned already. Why are you condemned? Because you do not believe. That is why you have to believe so that you will not be condemned. You have to believe in the Savior and confess Him so that you will receive His salvation. The third point to be looking at, the third point, is God's incomprehensible love known. God's incomprehensible love known. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. No one can, no one who has not, you know, tasted of this grace of God, of this love of God, can understand the, you know, the unlimited dimensions of His love, as in the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of His love. No one who has not, you know, not tasted of His love can understand it. It's an incomprehensible love, God's incomprehensible love known, and it's only known to those who believe. It's only known to those who believe in and receive it. Those who believe, those who perceive, those who recognize love and they, you know, they grab the offer which he has preferred. They grab that offer instantaneously. They do not hesitate. They do not, they do not relent. They are, they are not reluctant towards the salvation that he has come to offer. They are not reluctant. And so when they see the offer like this, they grab it instantaneously. Those who, you know, act like that, they act in tandem to what they have seen. They have seen the love of God, and so it becomes known unto them. In John chapter 1, verse 10 to 12, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, if you can receive Him, be among those who will receive Him. Be among those who will perceive Him. Be among those who will, you know, know this love, who will see this love, and, you know, will stretch forth His hand, or a hand to receive of this love so that you can know it, so that you can know it, the incomprehensible love of God. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You have to believe on him so that you will receive of his salvation, so that you'll be given the power, the power to live righteously, godly. Is, is the power some people say is it possible to live righteously is it possible to live i uh, know godly in this morally weakening world yes it's possible because you will receive the power from him to live in this world to live righteously and godly in isaiah chapter 53 isaiah 53 verse 3 to 5 is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs. He did that so that we can have salvation and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. You can see that. He was wounded so that we can be saved. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So we now have salvation of our bodies and healing of our souls. We now have salvation of our souls and healing of our bodies as a result of the reconciliatory work of Christ on the tree. As, as a result of his substitutionary death on the cross, to set us free so that we will not become a dross, so that we will be saved from our gross iniquities as a result of his propitiatory, you know, walk on the cross of Calvary. So that through the emission of his blood, there will be remission of our sins. In Romans chapter 10, in verse 11 to 13, to show us how we can claim it, how we can claim that offer of salvation he has preferred. So that we can claim it and you know have it and know it in Romans chapter 10 in verse 11 to 13. 
For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Verse, verse, 10, verse 11. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord of our Lord is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be among those who call on the name of the Lord this day. You are calling upon him, not with doubt, not with doubt. You are calling upon him with faith, with faith, with faith. Faith that, you know, that call those things that be not as though they were. Faith, which is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. If you can have that faith and you believe in the Savior and you call upon Him, you stretch forth your hand to receive of His salvation, you will be saved. You will know Him. You will know Him. You will know His love that has been shown upon you. You will know His love that has been shown upon mankind. You will know the move of His love. You will know that the love has been set in motion to save sinners. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn us but to save the sinners from their sins. You can be among those who will receive his salvation this day. Go to the Lord now in prayer and talk to him and he will bring his salvation in your life.